Welcome to the Doctor Doctor series. My name is Dr. Ramit Sandhu and I'm here to talk to you today about testicular pain. Now you're probably wondering why I've picked this topic. Well, let me share a story with you. So a few months ago when I was on one of my surgical on-call night shifts, I was called to see a young boy with testicular pain. Now he'd had this pain for three days and he'd not told anyone. He'd come into the uh, A&E department seeking help. Now when we examined him, he had a condition called testicular torsion. And we found that that testicle was not salvageable. So we had to go in and operate and remove that testicle. And when we removed that testicle, we had to operate on the other one to fix it in place to prevent this condition happening again. Something I'll explain in more detail later. And when we went into the other side to have a look, what we found was that he had torsion on that side as well, which meant that unfortunately, we had to remove both testicles. And as you can imagine, this has left the boy in a state of infertility and with no endogenous production of testosterone or male hormones. So he's gonna need male hormone support for life. He's never gonna be able to have children. And as you can imagine, he's probably gonna suffer some severe psychological trauma from this as well. So that's the background story as to why I feel this is a really important topic to talk about. And I think testicular pain is something a lot of people don't have a clue about. They're worried to talk about and they don't know what to do about it. So today we're gonna to, we're gonna make it very clear to you what needs to happen if you've got testicular pain. So this video is going to focus on acute sudden onset testicular pain. We're going to look at the two commonest causes in a young male, that's one under the age of 35, and how to differentiate between those and what you need to do next if you've got these symptoms. And I'm going to give you a couple of quick tests at home that might help you differentiate between the two conditions we're going to talk about as well. So the first condition we're going to talk about is the more worrying one, and this is testicular torsion. This is normally a sudden onset testicular pain at any point in the day and you could be doing absolutely anything you could be sat there watching tv playing playstation with a friend or you could be running around outdoors and kicking a ball around it won't matter this pain will come on all of a sudden it will be incredibly painful we're talking a 9 10 out of 10 it'll have you sweaty with pain you might feel nauseous you'll have a bit of a stomach ache you know pain in the pit of your stomach you will feel really quite bad and you will know something's wrong at this point um, you might have what's called testicular torsion now you're probably wondering, what is testicular torsion? Well, let me explain it to you. So you see the testicles are suspended through the abdomen into the scrotum via a cord called the spermatic cord. Now this cord carries all the essential arteries that supply the testicles and the veins that drain blood away from the testicles, as well as some of the nervous supply. And this spermatic cord is a fibrous sheath, it's quite tough, and it's normally fixed in place so it can't twist around on itself. However, in about 10% of the human population of males, um, this tube is not fixed in position, which means it can twist upon itself. And if it can twist upon itself, it can in effect cut off its own blood supply. Now, when that happens, as you can imagine, much like getting a numb arm, eventually the circulation stops entirely and you develop gangrene and necrosis, which are irreversible and the testicle is then dead and needs removing. Now, the reason this is such a, a surgical emergency is because you have a mere six hours from the onset of symptoms to get in there and do something about it. You see, if we can operate within six hours, then 90 to 100% of cases are salvageable in that testicle. Anything beyond that, and that success rate drops, if you go beyond 24 hours, we're talking up to 10% success rate. So you really wanna get in there and do something about it quick. Now, what are we gonna do about this? Well, we need to operate, and here's why. So we go in and we operate with the intention of salvaging, hopefully, the affected testicle, if it's within six hours. However, that's not the main reason for the operation. You see, in 40% of people who have torsion, they find that this anatomical defect where the tube or the spermatic cord was not fixed in place, actually is present on both sides of the testicles, which means that whilst they've had torsion in one side, they could have it in the other side. And that could lead you in a situation like the story we talked about earlier, being then having to have both testicles removed. So the main aim of the operation is to go in and fix the other side to make sure it never happens there, and if possible, to salvage the affected testicle. Now, the sooner that happens, the better. So as you can probably appreciate, in testicular torsion, it really is a race against the clock. You want to get something done about it as soon as possible. Now, the second condition that can cause typically sudden onset acute testicular pain is something called epididymitis or epididymoorchitis. These are both synonymous terms and they're ancient Greek and basically just mean inflammation of the testicle or inflammation of the tubing behind the testicle. 
Now, how does this present? This can be acute or slightly gradual onset testicular pain. Typically not as painful as torsion. It feels more like a, a heavy dragging sensation with a deep ache in the pit of the stomach that may extend into the thighs and the gluteal muscles. You may feel nauseous, you may vomit, you will most likely have some fevers and some sweating as well as this is an infection. So what are the causes of epididymitis? Well, typically it's an infection of the testes or the tubing behind the testicle and can be caused by a variety of things such as a urinary tract infection that's not been treated, a sexually transmitted infection such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, or it can be due to a viral infection although this is less common such as mumps and sometimes can be caused by exercising on a very full bladder and this is quite common in the navy and the army. So if it is epididymitis what can we do about it? Well a few things. The first thing is we'll treat the infection with about two weeks of antibiotics. The next thing is I recommend good regular painkillers. So as long as you're safe to do so and you have no medical reasons not to, regular paracetamol and ibuprofen will be excellent for the pain. So that's paracetamol four hourly and ibuprofen three times a day. The ibuprofen will help to take away the inflammation and the paracetamol will target the pain only. You can also use other painkillers such as codeine as well if needed. Now something else that really helps is something called a testicular support which we can give you from A&E and if you can't get one of those so just wear tight firm underwear to take the pressure off the testicles and not let them be free hanging. And of course you want plenty of rest and you want to, when you want to lie down and have a rest I'd recommend elevating the testicles so pop in a cushion or something underneath and a little bit of heat won't go amiss so nothing too hot but a bit of a warm hot water bottle or warm heat pad will help take away the inflammation and pain. And of course, warm baths will help too. You'll find the pain will typically start to subside after a couple of days and get gradually better each day over the next two weeks. And I would recommend a full STI screen if you are sexually active as well. So let me give you two very simple tests you can do right now at home to help differentiate between the two worrying diagnoses. Now the first one you can do is very simple. It's called Prenz test. Now all you do is you drop your pants, you pop your scrotum in the palm of your hand and you lift your hand up so that you take the pressure off the testes and they're no longer free hanging. And what you want to do is you want to wait a few seconds and see if that takes the pain away or takes the edge off. If it does, that means it's more likely to be epididymitis over testicular torsion. Now for the second test, you're going to need a little bit of equipment. So if you go into the bathroom, grab a mirror and drop your pants. What you're going to do is imagine this is your scrotum, this is your thigh. You take your thumbnail and you scratch it down the inner thigh two or three times in a long line. And you look at the reflection of the testicle to see if it scrunches up and moves upwards. If it crinkles, the scrotum crinkles and the testicle moves up, then it's less likely to be torsion. And that's considered a preserved cremasteric reflex. That's a good sign. That being said, neither of these tests are infallible and it shouldn't delay you getting to A&E as soon as possible. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope that's answered some questions for you and you've got a better idea about what to do next. If you liked what we talked about today, please give us a like and hit the subscribe button for more free medical information and just useful stuff for life.